Hi guys and welcome back to my Coco Chanel. So in today's video we're going to be going through how to perform the conventional deadlift and some of the most common mistakes that you often see. Now I want to start with these first because these can be the cause of injury, the cause of a weaker lift or the cause of a bad lift. So without further ado, let's jump into the gym and start with the four biggest mistakes I often see with the deadlift. So the first mistake that we are going to touch on is probably one of the most common mistakes and that's a little rounding of the lower back. Uh, and the upper back is fine but the lower back should be kept nice and straight and trying to drop the load as consistent as, as possible so it doesn't become an issue. So as you can see here the lower back is well rounded as some come up for each and every rep. Now again it doesn't matter too much if the upper scapula and shoulders round a little bit but that lower back we want to keep nice and straight. Now the second mistake that I want to touch up on is the hips shooting first instead of the legs. This may be because you're getting too low at the start of the deadlift and you're trying to drive your hips back and then sitting into the movement instead of just sitting back down. The hips shooting back will completely eliminate your legs and make the lift a lot harder than it should be. Um, so we want to try and avoid that bum coming up first and try and keep it down as we come up through the, the leg drive. Now the third mistake that I want to touch on is hyperextension. This is something when you look at the most beginner type of lifters you may see quite a lot of in the gym. When it comes to locking out you don't need to come to this hyperextended position and put extra pressure on the spine and cause possible future issues. Simply come to upright position, squeeze the glutes, don't shrug or lean back. This is where most injuries will generally come from when people are going through the deadlifts, especially at a beginner level. Now, the fourth and final mistake that I want to touch on is something that isn't too common that you won't see a lot of people or even really realise and taking tension from the bars you just see me doing there. Most people come into the lift fired up and ready to pull a big lift but forget the small and vital step taking the tension from the bar. If you simply just try and rip the bar up from the static position you're going to lose a lot of torque and make the lift a lot harder than it needs to be. Now we're going to go into your cue points and cue point number one is foot position. Now you want to kind of go from a shoulder width position. Now to kind of explain the most powerful position is where you'd land from a jump or where you'd start from a jump. And this will vary dependent on how wide you are as a person. I'm quite narrow so my stance is a little bit narrow as you can see. But with the bar position you want to be able to see your laces from the other side of the bar and kind of be able to get a visual cue of that when you're setting up. Now, cue number two is going to be hand position and grip. Now, there's a couple of different grips, there's three types, but we're only going to talk about the two most common. First one being the double hand grip. Now, this one allows the most balance, the most basic type of grip, and is more balanced for the body, but it can be a little weaker, and eventually, when you increase the load, the bar can begin to roll out your hands, as I was just shown there. Now, the second type of grip, which is a little bit firmer and stronger for the lift is a mixed grip and allows the bar to stop rotating or rolling from your fingers. Now the alternate grip can set up here in terms of creating some imbalances unless you're switching the grip from kind of set to set. Now when we look at grip width you need to remember the wider the grip, the more depth you'll have to get through the deadlift. Now, most people won't have the mobility to do this and it makes the lift a lot harder for you and can increase the likelihood of injury. Try and have your hands just outside the hips but not too close to the point where you won't be able to get and drive your knees up and of course slight bends in the elbow. Now, cue number three is gonna be the setup. So shins will be nice and close to the bar and if you get a few grazing on your shins, probably a good thing. Next thing is going to be driving the chest up a little bit like a gorilla. So if you can imagine as a mental cue point that you're sitting like King Kong in the lift, it'll be a lot easier for you. I want to do is keep the hips down. So now as you can see, it's sort of going to be like a leg press. Now you can see me doing here a leg press and the position that I'm in, I'm firstly using the, the heels to drive through and the quads to get the, the lift out. This is going to be exactly the same when we come into the deadlift. So the first portion is gonna be almost a, a, a kind of a standing leg press, so to speak. And the hips go down, we drive up like we spoke about before and engage in those lats first. So again, take as much slack out the bar as we can. 
Now, cue number four is going to be back position. Now, we briefly touched on this as one of the big mistakes before in terms of we don't want any lum lumbar curvature um, as we want to protect that lower back. And to be honest, it looks pretty painful and horrific when you see it. You want to keep more of a straight back, although, as we spoke about, well, a bit of upper curvature through the shoulders and scapulas are fine. You'll often see this for even professional powerlifters um, and it won't cause too many problems. Now, cue number five that we want to go into is leg and hip drive. The first part of it, like I've been speaking about with the leg press, we want to get the legs as active as possible until we get to the knees, and that's going to be our cue point. Um, and it's not really until we've got to that position, just on the knee or above the knee, that it kind of really comes into the daddy of back movements. And when we get do get to here, then it's going to start becoming a lower back and glute exercise. This is where and why I preach to people the importance of a strong core and really powerful glutes is going to really help get that last part of the movement from the top of the knees up to that lockout position and kind of stood up proudly. Now again, use that those knees as a visual cue and don't be around the lower back at the top. Now, a good way to develop this part and the top part of the movement the lockout is going to be using rack pulls, which is a, a great accessory movement uh, as it becomes more of a lower back exercise. Again, no hyperextension when we're going through there though. And it's something that we really want to get to grip with in terms of that final pull, because I think some people will struggle from the ground to the knee and some people will struggle when it comes to getting from the knee to the lockout position. So imagine splitting that up into two parts, one being a leg press and the other being a rack pull will really help us like a visual cue point or allow you to break the movements down into two separate exercises. Now, on the way down through the movement, I don't just want you dropping the bar like you see a lot of people doing it in the gym and slamming it. You want to kind of start hinging like you can see me doing and then you can start the lowering phase and drop the bar if you need to when it comes to kind of getting to the knee point. It'll stop you from getting any uh, injuries from the movement by dropping too quickly and it'll also, what you want to do is allow the glutes to kind of release and release the lower back as you go into that hinge movement and then drop as you come closer to the floor. Now I hope that video was really helpful in picking up some tips in terms of what to avoid firstly when you're with the deadlift, how to set up, how to perform it, and how to lower it. These are all going to be tips that help strengthen your deadlift and perform a safer deadlift. Also, last week I covered how to perform 10 pull-ups or get your first pull-ups and make sure that you check out that video as well. If you found this video helpful and it's going to help you deadlift in the gym, then please give it a massive thumbs up and a like. And if this is your first time on my channel, then please subscribe. And I'll catch you in my next video.